Are you ready for this? More snow. That's right, more snow could get in the way of your weekend plans. Details on when the worst of it could hit. All this brutal cold could limit the wine selection at your next party. How local vineyards are weathering temperatures that could cripple crops. And it's more than an eyesore. Neighbors are concerned that this abandoned school is a danger to the community. And whether you want to win a free car, test drive through bumpy terrain, or just look at some beautiful eye candy, we have a sneak peek of this year's auto show to guide you through the best parts. This Channel 3 newscast is brought to you by the Classic Auto Group and the all-new DriveClassic.com. And now, Channel 3 News at 7. We are expecting significant amounts of snow this weekend, and we'll have more on that in a minute. But first, we're bringing you a reason to forget about the brutal weather and to dream about driving off into the sunset. Russ Mitchell is live at the Cleveland Auto Show, where he's revving up to show us some of the highlights this year. Hi, Russ. Hey Robin, I can't hear you, so I just waited until your mouth stopped moving and I started talking. We'll try to get that fixed and get back with you later, but let me tell you right now, welcome to the 2014 Cleveland Car Show here at the IX Center. They tell me there are a thousand cars here and they say this is the biggest Cleveland car show ever. Coming up in just a bit, we'll give you an overview of the show. We'll show you some of the cool cars around here. And we'll talk to the head of the Cleveland Automobile Dealers Association to give us an idea of just how much this, this event, how important this event is to Northeast Ohio. Robin, I still can't hear you, but I will tell you this, it is your last day. We're all very sad about that. So we've picked out a couple of parting gifts for you. So if you give me a request, I'm not going to hear it. So I'll just surprise you later, okay? Just give me a thumbs up. I can see you. Perfect. Okay, we're all good. All right, we'll check back with you, Russ. A lot of people use that excuse. They claim they can't hear me. But anyway, all right. We have much more from Russ throughout the show. Hopefully he'll be able to hear me. But now we have to get to our other big story, the impending snow. Betsy, I understand you have some advice for anyone trying to run errands this weekend. <laughs> What? Betsy! What? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear you, Robin. This is like being at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, we do have some stuff to talk about. We have a winter storm that's going to be coming our way, bringing us some snow, but it's not even expected to start for more than 24 hours. So, okay, we've got a little time to deal with here. Winter storm watch has been posted for Richland, Ashland, Wayne, Holmes, Stark, Tuscarawas, and Carroll counties. That also includes Columbiana and Mahoning counties. That begins tomorrow night and goes through early Monday and you can see we're not alone. There's a big stretch of uh, the Midwest that is under the same type of a winter storm watch as we have a couple different components that are going to be coming together. First we have a cold front that's off to the northwest that is going to not only bring us a start of snow tomorrow night, the snow starting tomorrow night, but it will also bring us some cold temperatures on Sunday as the snow continues. Then as we go Sunday night into Monday, that's where that west coast storm system begins to make its move through the Tennessee Valley. That kind of is where things get a little shady as far as the forecast goes for Sunday into Monday. Some forecast models saying we've got snow coming Sunday night. Others saying we're going to be dry. We'll detail it for you coming up in your full forecast in a little bit. All right. Thank you, Betsy. Poor thing. The only thing she's been telling us about for months is cold and snow and cold and snow. <laughs> and plenty of people and businesses are feeling the pains of this extreme winter. And last night's cold may have been the final straw for a very popular item made in the Grand River Valley region. The real issue is the cold temperature. Gene Sigel woke up this morning not only to the cold, but to the harsh reality that these temperatures may have damaged his 170 acres of vines. What it's doing is killing the vines, at least above ground. The grapevines don't like cold temperatures, especially not for 19 nights over a course of 90 days. Gene hasn't seen conditions like this since 1994. And while the wine farmer knows a lot of work is left after the thaw, he acknowledges the problems you can face when you rely on Mother Nature. Usually the vines have some green inside of them, but because of our extreme cold, they're now brown. A telling sign there will be no growing this season. But will the local wineries survive? Most of us have adequate inventories. We've learned to survive year in and year out. It takes a year or two before a vintage is ready. We're selling 2010 to 2012 wines right now. But a two to three million dollar loss of revenue from fruit they would have made into wine won't stop South River Winery. Well, we'll figure out a way to get by as long as this doesn't happen multiple years in a row. 
But the cold helps in some cases starting tomorrow and for the next three Saturdays, you can go out and enjoy a glass of ice wine at South River Winery. Well, the city of Vermilion is hoping Mother Nature cooperates soon. It's been nearly a week since the river flooded, but the damage lingers for many residents. The high waters carried massive ice chunks into yards and roads, creating a barricade of sorts around some homes. The city recently cleared out the roads, but back patios and basements are destroyed. Restoration crews and neighbors are working together to rebuild. Their main concern now is when another thaw comes, the ice chunks will get worse. Still, homeowners are staying positive. Nobody got hurt. There's nothing there that can't be fixed. And so from that standpoint, it's good. whatever's going to happen down here is going to happen. The ice will melt and boats will be back on the river and uh, we'll, we'll be ready to do it all over again next year. You know, we've been pretty fortunate in the past few years. The city tells us an icebreaker is ready to make a move at a moment's notice. They're monitoring the weather for the right conditions. If you have been down East 55th, you may have noticed an old abandoned school that continues to crumble and attract vandals. It's an eyesore and neighbors are concerned. Education reporter Kim Wheeler first brought us this story several years ago and explains why it's still a problem today. Kim? We first came here to Wilson School here on East 55th in the summer of 2011 and the Cleveland School said they would try to do a better job of maintaining the property. We came back today and take a look at some of the video that we got here at this property. It is still certainly an eyesore. Now here's some of that video. You can see where people have been inside the building. We also found several ways to get in the building, which is a big concern for neighbors. Now the area city councilman said he wants the district to board up all the windows so no one can get inside. But so far, just the first floor is boarded up. Now, they had hoped that someone would develop the property. So far, that has not happened. And there's concern about this being a hazard to the neighborhood and nearby kids. You got kids growing up in the neighborhood and you don't want nobody to get hurt or anything going around like where you live at. Now this was designated historical landmark, but the district has asked to be able to demolish this property. They were denied. They may try again. They say they come out here to this property frequently. They plan to paint over the graffiti, to board up the windows and put that fence back that we showed you in in the video, but it is a continuing problem. Reporting live in Cleveland, I'm Kim Wheeler. Thank you, Kim. Cleveland political and business leaders have some homework this weekend. They'll put finishing touches on their pitch to Republicans in Washington Monday, hoping to land their convention in 2016. One question they'll face, will the convention center hotel be done in time? The answer is yes, but final construction and staff training may overlap. We are uh, working with a schedule alternative that would provide for substantial completion of construction by April 1 of 2016, which would permit a full hotel opening by June 1, 2016. Would the queue be ready? The city says yes, even though the NBA needs it to be available for June playoffs. Seven other cities are also in the running to land the RNC. Our own Tom Barris will be in Washington Monday with a live report to tell us how that Cleveland pitch goes. Well, you've heard of Botox and maybe even calf implants, but the new plastic surgery trend deals with adding facial hair. The great lengths men are going for better beards. Plus, we're live at the auto show with a look at this year's new features and some amazing dream cars. Go to driveclassic.com where you'll find 4,000 cars and an eight minute. Today was a time to bring attention to kids who are overcoming challenges to carve out a bright future for themselves. The Boys and Girls Clubs of Cleveland recognized the Youth of the Year this morning. The organization also awarded volunteers and staff members who have made the club a place for students to learn and find support. The Boys and Girls Clubs aim to inspire and enable young people in communities throughout Cleveland. They offer a safe place for students to study and make friendships after school. All right, for all you folks out at Madison Village and the rest of you watching, we are headed back to Ross at the Cleveland Auto Show to find out all the new features we can check out this year. Can you hear me now, Ross? Robin, I can hear you. I thought you were pranking me on yes. your last day, you little devil. But I can <laughs> well, hear you now. I, I, I can hear you now. Don't, don't put it past me. Okay, all right. What's going there on out thousand, there? There are, 
There are a thousand, I can really hear you, Robin, thank you. There are a thousand cars here at the Cleveland Car Show this year, and the folks who run it tell us it's the biggest ever, as we told you earlier. Joining me right now is Lou Vidantonio, the president of the Cleveland Automotive Dealers Association. Lou, it is always great to see you. Oh, thanks for coming out, Russ. Why is this event so important to the automobile industry in Northeast Ohio? Well, not only is it the spring into, actually spring, spring's coming, but it's a launch into the spring selling season. It's the, the beginning of March. Um, people have been cooped up. Now it's time to come in somewhere warm, out of the elements, have a thousand vehicles, like you said before, in a low pressure atmosphere to see anything and everything that the manufacturers have to offer. Let's talk about some of the things that people will see here. The, the Jeep, what is this called? Like a, a Jeep ramp over there? Yeah, it's a, a Jeep track that they've had a couple of years here. Um, you're going over an 18 foot you know, hill. Uh, you're riding in a Jeep inside the building. And, and matter of fact, Chrysler added another ride and drive, which is the Ram ride and drive, uh, which is their Ram pickup. And so they have two different tracks going at the same time inside the building. A lot of interactive things to do Absolutely, here absolutely. Well. What are the other, some of the, some of the other highlights that people will find this well, year? Well, I mean, you know, not only the cars are the stars. They are here, you know, that's what we're here for. But you can not only see them, you can drive them. And there's, there's nine ride and drives outside from nine different manufacturers, actually 14 brands, nine different manufacturers. You can actually take the vehicle off premises, drive it, and, and then basically look at it, drive it, and mm -hmm. ultimately go back to the dealership and purchase it. We were talking about some of the other cool cars here. The Corvette Z06 is here. Mm -hmm. You've got several yep. Corvettes here. Also, there, there is a, a Camaro Z28, Z28, which is very Z28. rare. Very rare car, the SS, and that's all the Chevy models. We got the brand new Mustang. We got a McLaren convertible. Mm -hmm. That's a 200,000 plus vehicle. Um, we've got some Rolls Royce this year for the first time, and a, an array of Aston Martins and Maseratis too. Things that I may not be able to, you know, purchase, but I could certainly <laughs> look at it at the auto show. I said earlier, people will leave here with several cases of unrequited love, I yeah, believe, because there are a lot of cool things definitely. to see. Okay, give us the particulars. You know, we, it starts tomorrow. This is this yep. is Employee Appreciation Day, so I look over here, and folks are just well. Wow, folks yeah. are just starting to come in right now. But give us the particulars from tomorrow on to the 9th of March. Uh, we open up tomorrow. We go run from the 1st to the 9th. Uh, daily, we're open from 11 to 10, Monday through Saturday. Sunday is 11 to 8. Mm -hmm. uh, tickets are $13 for adults, 11 for preteens and seniors. No charge to park. Come in, you get yourself an auto show program for free, and it's really a good time for the family. Great. Right. Parking is taking, being taken care of by the dealers, right? The Dealers Association and okay. the members of our group right. are taking care of parking. Good to see you. Ross, thanks. All right. Good Appreciate luck this year. Here. Thank yep. you so much. Thank you. All right, Robin, that's all for now. We're going to go pick out your parting gifts, and I'll see you later in the broadcast. I can't wait. Two doors, four doors, I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Russ. Well, getting across town could be a challenge this weekend, no matter what car you're driving. Betsy warns us when the big snow will hit. Plus. I do think guys are pressured now to look a certain type of way, which is bearded and uh, manly, I guess. Oh, yeah. What is the price of manliness? Men are going to new extremes to grow the facial hair of their dreams. It involves a doctor and a whole lot more money than I have in my wallet. Well, as facial hair gains popularity, some are taking desperate measures to grow a beard. Believe it or not, some are getting beard transplants. Yep, surgeons take hair from the back of the head or their chest and implant bare sections on the face. They use local anesthesia, but the procedure isn't cheap. It costs upwards of $7,000, depending on how much hair you want to transplant. What do you think about that, Betsy? <laughs> I'm trying to process it still. Would would chest hair look the same here? I I don't know. <laughs> and certainly hair from your head wouldn't, you know? I mean, I I don't know. That's just one of those the wheels are turning but they're not really going anywhere. Maybe next week I'll look into this whole thing. Yeah, I'll you do a big have a little expose. more time on your hands. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll donate. Yeah. Some of my own Think beach about it funds. on Sunday as you're sitting in the house watching the snowflakes fly and yeah. you know, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting weekend for us weather-wise as oh. well. Temperatures are going to be in the 20s tonight. Clouds will be on the increase after our gorgeous sunny day today. Uh, temperatures actually going to be rising through the night. We're kind of sitting here in the uh, mid 20s right now. No
notice the teens out to the east, okay? So the, your temperatures in Ashtabula, Youngstown will be coming up. The rest of us still in the 20s, and I think we're going to stay in the 20s overnight tonight. We've had the sunshine today. It was glorious sunshine. There are some snow showers off to the northwest of us. That is ahead of a frontal system that will drape through the area tomorrow night. So we're going to see increasing clouds tonight. We may see a little wintry mix tomorrow evening before the snow starts tomorrow night. And then way out to the west, that's where our storm system is for Sunday into Monday. That's a lot of time and a lot of distance and uh, quite a bit of uncertainty too as to the exact track that that is going to be taking. Here's the way it's going to shake out. We'll have a front that moves uh, down into the Great Lakes region. The snow will begin to spread across southern Michigan and kind of hang up there through the morning. But once we move through Saturday night, I think an area of low pressure will, a weak one, will cross the area. That may stir up a little bit of that mix. Meanwhile, as the front moves south, we'll have a surge of moisture and upper level energy that works through and notice the snow coming down on Sunday. We may have a little bit of mixing uh, in central Ohio, that I-70 corridor. If this shifts, that's going to take care of our snow totals. You know the drill by this time of the year. Uh, certainly there's a lot that can still change, but periods of heavy snow possible Sunday morning. We'll see it taper off then for Sunday afternoon. And meanwhile, that California storm system has been moving right across the southern part of the country. Where exactly that moves through the Tennessee or Ohio valleys will have absolutely huge impacts on our Sunday night into Monday forecast. And therefore, we have to wait until we see where this is going to see just how good or bad the Monday morning commute is going to be. Right now, it's kind of looking like it's going to go south, but there's still the possibility that that will come north and make some issues our way uh, for Monday morning. As far as the snowfall potential, well, it's all dependent upon, of course, the track of the storm system. You know this drill, as I mentioned. Three to six inches for the greater Cleveland area and down into the north end of Akron, but then farther south, six to nine inches of snow will fall. Now the track of the storm system can shift all of this north and south. I think we're going to have a nice east-west banding, but I think it could move north and south. So just stay tuned on the latest forecast. And this is only through Sunday evening. That does not include Sunday night into Monday, which of course is kind of that uh, California system. So we're going to be in the 30s for the day tomorrow. I think tomorrow is going to be a great day. We're going to have a lot of clouds around, but it will be warm. We'll start that icy mix potential tomorrow evening. That changes to snow tomorrow night. Snow coming down on Sunday in your Shell 7-day forecast. If we get the snow on Monday, I think it'll be pretty light for us. It'll move out quickly, and then you can see we kind of hold on to teens, 20s, and then eventually 40 degrees by a week from today. And Miss Robin, I have to say it has been an honor. I was so excited. <laughs> when they said, Robin Swoboda is coming to Channel 3, and I, I remember watching you, I grew up with you, Aww. and it was just so amazing that, you know, I used to paint my nails when I was a kid and stack them <laughs> on the coffee table, just like <laughs> Miss Robin pretend. did. Oh, very funny. And now I get to do well, it thank right you. next And to if you. I may pay you a compliment, over the years people have said to me, um, my mother used to love to watch you, and I realized how much that meant when my own mother passed away, mm -hmm. and my mother loved to watch you. Thank you. <laughs> she just thought you were fantastic. Robin so Jr., I, right? <laughs> I used to be a little jealous. <laughs> so you're, you're fantastic. So Thank you. It's been my honor to work with you, young lady. Thank you. All right. If you don't have, let's do it together. If you don't have millions of dollars <laughs> to spend on a car, there's still no harm in looking. We'll check in with Russ, who's live at the auto show, to show us some of the most expensive, snazzy-looking cars. Pick one out, Betsy. Here's what's coming up tonight on NBC. Brought to you by Audi Willoughby, Ohio's original Audi store. Anything, including weather from Channel 3, every day on 106.5 The Lake. Some people like to splurge on houses, others buy clothes, and some prefer something with four wheels. Whether we can afford them or not, it's still fun to look at multi-million dollar cars, and Russ is at the Cleveland Auto Show to give us a sneak peek right in the thick of them, aren't you, Russ? That's right, Robin. We've moved down to what they call millionaire's row. Let me show you a couple here. This is a Porsche 911 Turbo S, $206,000. Over here is a Rolls Royce. I think that's the Silver Shadow. I'm not even going to ask how much that is, so that's ridiculous. However, here's what I picked out for you, Robin. An Aston Martin convertible. $328,000. This is your parting gift from all of us here yeah. at Channel 3. We hope you enjoy it. Hey, <laughs> can, can, let me say something. Let me say something real quick, Robin. Seriously, on behalf of all of us, we are going to miss you tremendously. You are an incredible human being. You're one of those rare people who makes everybody around you better. 
We will miss your smile, we'll miss your laugh, we'll miss the way that you piercingly sing the lonely goat around the newsroom <laughs> as, as you gallop around. I will miss working with you on Fridays. I've always felt a certain kinship with you and I'm gonna miss you, my friend, and we need to stay in touch and you should know that all of Cleveland misses you. Out here, people are asking about you and people love Robin Swoboda. Uh, well, I, I love you, Russ, and I love, uh, I love all the viewers who over the years have invited me into their homes and uh, the people here at Channel 3 who welcome me into their lives and uh, your lives at home. So you are a class act, Russ Mitchell. And uh, look at all my parting gifts. And uh, no car for me, but the station took up a collection, $1.57 and change. So <laughs> thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home. Pickle and Mitchell tonight at 11. Have a great weekend and stay classy, Cleveland.